dark became light I believe it, I believe it, yeah You spoke my name and my heart came to life I believe it, I believe it, yeah I wanna sing about it, I wanna scream and shout it I'm gonna sing it right now
Hello everyone, welcome Cornerstone and Livingstone, and also anyone else who is tuning in to join us today for another Sunday worship. Uh, we all hope you had a wonderful week, and really, we just hope you had a wonderful time with uh, your family, your parents, and your mother last week, especially since it was Mother's Day. Even though, because of the whole situation, um, I'm assuming a lot of us had to probably stay home, but nevertheless, uh, we welcome all of you. And we're so glad to see all of you guys. Before we begin, uh, I'd just like to give uh, a friendly reminder once again that uh, you are, if you take pictures of you um, doing worship with your Bible and all that stuff and just send in like photos or pictures to me uh, through email or cacao, um, that's great. I know some of you guys are already doing that, but for those of you who might have missed it, uh, if you do that, you guys are eligible to get your talent points so that when we gather all together again, we can give you out those talents. So, last week, we talked about how the disciples of Jesus and the followers of Jesus, about 120 in all, they were all gathered together and they were praying and they were waiting for the promised gift. Remember that? And so, God sends His promised gift and it turns out to be the Holy Spirit. And because they were filled with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit enabled them to speak in all these different languages that they didn't know how to speak. And they were able to talk about Jesus and God to all the people who were gathered for the festival. And not only that, Peter you know, addresses the crowd and he talks to this big crowd about Jesus, who Jesus is, what he did for them, and that the only way to be saved is through Jesus Christ. And on that day, 3,000 people turned to the Lord. Now that is amazing. But also the fact that, you know, with our month's theme, which is determination, there's this aspect where, you know, even non-believers can have determination. But as followers of Christ, our determination isn't just based on our strength alone because we know that as human beings we're not perfect uh, we are prone to make, make many mistakes we're, we're going to fail and we're going to fall we're going to stumble at some point in our time and for a lot of us you know that it's going to happen from time to time but the good news is our determination is strengthened it's motivated and it's guided by not just our strength and intellect, but by the Holy Spirit. As followers and believers of Jesus Christ, we are adopted into God's family. As God's children, we have received His Holy Spirit. And so we are not alone, and we don't have to do this alone. So today, I want to continue on with the book of Acts, and we're going to look at chapter 3 and part of chapter 4. And so the story goes, one day, the apostle Peter and John, they were going to the temple. Now, this temple had multiple entrances, and uh, one of the gates, it was called, well, when we translate it into English, we can simply say that it was called the beautiful gate. And there was a beggar there, and of course, since he's a beggar, when Peter and John walked by, the beggar asked for money. Now, Peter and John, they really, you know, they, they didn't have money. They didn't have a lot of money, right? They, uh, so they looked at the beggar, and instead of giving money, they said something. And so let's see what Peter said. So if you have your Bibles with me, we're going to turn to the book of Acts, and we're going to start looking at chapter 3. So please turn with me to Acts chapter 3, starting verse 4. Peter and John looked at him intently, and Peter said, Look at us. The lame man looked at them eagerly, expecting some money. But Peter said, I don't have any silver or gold for you, but I'll give you what I have. In the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, 
get up and walk. Then Peter took the lame man by the right hand and helped him up. And as he did, the man's feet and ankles were instantly healed and strengthened. That is pretty amazing, right? Peter does this miracle, right? And this beggar who was lame for pretty much his whole life is now walking and jumping and leaping for joy. But obviously, we all know that it wasn't Peter who had the power to actually you know, heal that beggar. What does Peter say? What did we just read in the Bible? He says, in the name of Jesus, right? So it's not him, right? It's Jesus, right? Jesus giving Peter the power to heal this beggar, right? It's, it's through Jesus that Peter is able to do this, right? Without Jesus, without God allowing this to happen, Peter wouldn't have been able to do this. And so it's, get, it's going to get really loud now because this person, the beggar, starts to praise God for this miracle. I mean, can you imagine if you were lame, if you couldn't use your legs, if you couldn't walk, you can't run. So all you can do is sit or lay down. And also, if you want to go anywhere, someone else has to take you there. And this person is pretty much been living like this for you know around 40 years for his whole life like this and as a beggar can you just imagine what he would be feeling the joy the gratitude and so he starts praising God and you know this is the temple so there's a lot of people who are you know going to the temple and you know all of a sudden there's a huge crowd because people are like hey what's going on you know, what's all this loud noise what's what's all this commotion what the heck is going on here and the beggar starts telling everyone what happened and the crowds the people they are absolutely astonished they are amazed because they are witness think about this this beggar has been sitting you know, and he's begging, he's been begging his entire life, and he's been begging in front of the temple, right? Do you think a lot of people knew who he was? Think about it this way. Let's say you've been go let's say you've been going to your school or your church, and this same person is begging there every week. You see him every week, right? Do you think so after a year, two years, 10 years, 20 years, 30, 40 years, you would, do you think you would recognize him? Right? Of course. If this same person has been in that same spot for the past 30, 40 years, right? And you, you go to church or your school or whatever building you go to and you've been seeing this person, right? And th we're talking, and this is like 2,000 years ago, we're talking about Jewish culture, we're talking about the temple. You, all those people, Jewish people, are going to be going to the temple weekly for like every year, right? Every month, every week, they're going there. So obviously, a lot of people recognized who this beggar was. And they knew that this person was lame. And all of a sudden, this person is walking, jumping, leaping for joy, praising the Lord. So all those people there who had seen this beggar for years and years, they were now witnesses. They saw what had happened. They couldn't believe it. And so they, the, all they could do was praise God, give all the credit to God. Because why? What did Peter and John do? Did they take the credit? No. They tell people, they told the people there that it's not them, right? They're like, why, why are you all amazed? And why are you looking at us as if, you know, we have power? We actually have power. No, it's Jesus, right? Jesus Christ has allowed us to do this miracle. And of course, God, but only through Jesus can you be saved. And God, remember, God has given all authority to Jesus Christ. And so Peter starts telling 
everyone there about Jesus. Now, guess who else was there? The temple guards, the religious leaders, you know, the Sadducees. They're all there, and they're like, oh no, the, this, these two people are talking about Jesus. Uh, we can't let that happen, so, all right, you know, it's already evening, so let's lock him up, put him in jail, and tomorrow we'll see what all this mess, what all this commotion is about. The next day, the leaders, they, you know, order the guards to bring Peter and John out, and they start asking them questions, because guess what? The leaders did not believe that Jesus was the Son of God. In fact, they're the ones who, you know, instigated everyone to get Jesus killed. And so they did not want any talk of Jesus going around. And so they call Peter and John and they're like, so by what power? How did you get this power to somehow heal this lame man? And th they start asking Peter and John. And what happens is, the Holy Spirit, right? The Holy Spirit is there. And Peter is filled with the Holy Spirit. And he speaks boldly and confidently. As if someone with authority and clarity. And as Peter and John is talking, the religious leaders are, they're shocked. They're like, Okay, what's going on? These two people, they're just un they're uneducated commoners, and yet the way they speak and the things that they speak about, they speak confidently, boldly, and as if with authority. Uh, who does this remind them of? Oh, that's right. Jesus. The disciples, Peter and John, the apostle, and disciples of Jesus, they are following their master. They are, they, they are following their master. And the leaders can see this. They, they are reminded. They, they remember, oh, these two people used to follow Jesus. And you know what the most, the craziest part in all of this? The leaders recognize and realize that a miracle has happened. They can't deny that the beggar who was lame is now all of a sudden healed. Everyone's talking about it. Everyone is giving credit to God. And so you would think that, oh, you know, now that, you know, that this miraculous sign has happened, okay, maybe, yeah, maybe we made a mistake. Maybe Jesus was the Son of God and uh, we need to change our ways. Right? Normally you think, you know, that kind of thought might happen, but no. These leaders, they see that a miracle has happened, and they're like, okay, well, we can't kill or arrest Peter and John, because if we do, these people are going to start a riot, because, you know, a miracle actually happened. So they're going to be like, oh, okay, why did you kill someone who did a miracle, you know, through God and, and Jesus? And so they're like, okay, well, well, let's threaten Peter and John. We're going to threaten them and tell them not to talk about Jesus anymore. We're going to, if they talk about Jesus again, we're going, to, we're going to really, you know, we're going to put them in jail. You know, we're going to like beat them up. Let's threaten them and then let's send them home. And so they call Peter and John and they're like, dude, we don't want you talking about Jesus. No, 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 that's, that's no, no. You can't do that. You can't talk about Jesus. And if you do, you're going to be in trouble, big trouble. Okay. All right, now go. But guess what Peter and John said? What do you th how do you think Peter and John replied to this? Hmm? And this is so important for us as believers living in a world where there are so many unbelievers and so many things going on. But Peter basically says, basically says, who are we supposed to obey? God or you? Are we supposed to obey the God, the master and creator of all things? The one who is in all control, the one who created life on earth and the whole universe, the stars, the galaxy, the planet? Or are we supposed to listen to you humans? Hmm. And so basically Peter says, we're gonna, we, we will obey God. That's what he says, and Peter and John leaves. And so for us, 
followers of Christ, when we think about the theme of the month, which is determination, and being determined means you're going to keep doing it. You're going to keep going. You're not going to give up. You're going to finish what you started. And so what, it, what does it mean for us Christians in our Christian lives to be determined when it comes to our faith? Right? It means until the end, right? Until our life here is over, we're going to keep on running for Jesus. Uh, to be determined as Christians is more than just oh, trying to do everything and not give up on my own strength, like we learned last week. Right? We have the Holy Spirit. We have God. We have Jesus. We're not in this alone. We're not alone. But that doesn't mean it's going to be easy. There's going to be so much um, obstacles in our lives. You know, sometimes the biggest obstacles or the biggest obstacle is ourselves. We also have to fight ourselves because we know we're not perfect. There are things that we want right? Uh, based on our self-centeredness or selfishness or our, our own desires, you know, and, and then also there's going to be this whole society, culture, world. At this point, all of you guys or most of you guys know what it means to be peer pressure, right? When you go to school, when you're with a bunch of your friends or classmates or people in your age and they all start doing something, and sometimes it may not be a good thing. It may not be a righteous thing. It may be something that's, that goes against what we learn as Christians in God's word, which is the truth. And when you don't follow those people, they might make fun of you, right? They might think, they might even call you a loser. They might, you know, they might think you're really weird. Who knows? There's all sorts of things that can happen. And you know, it hurts. It really hurts when that happens. When people, you know, reject you and they think you're not cool because you're following what God told us to do. You're following God's word and you're following Jesus. And they reject you and they hurt you. You know, it, it hurts. It really hurts. And it's not just today. It was like this hundreds and thousands of years ago. Look at Peter and John from this story. This happened roughly 2,000 years ago. And they are being threatened by religious leaders who have authority. You see, when we get hurt by you know, people from school or our friends, I'm not saying that's, that's, a, that's fine or that's good. No, no, it, it hurts and you know, that's painful. But at least... Here, at least here in America, our lives are not being threatened for our faith. But Peter and John, they are being th their very lives are being threatened. They're being, th you know, the leaders are saying, we're going to throw you in jail. We're going to torture you. We're going to beat you up. So their lives are at risk. And even today, right, outside of America, in many other countries, people their very lives are being threatened because they are following Jesus. And a lot of people have died, you know, in today's society, in the world, and throughout history. Many people have died because they were followers of Jesus Christ. So, what I'm trying to say is, as people who are living here in America, as followers of Christ, we need to be reminded that our determination doesn't just come from ourselves. It's not just about my own determination, but it's about, and about myself, but it's about the determination that is rooted in God's Word, in relationship with the Trinity. We get strength, we receive strength from our Heavenly Father, from Jesus, from the Holy Spirit. Right? to help us to overcome those obstacles, whether it's from within ourselves or whether it's from around us. And we need to continue the good fight like Peter and John did 2,000 years ago. Even though it was not easy 
and it can be painful, Peter and John realized that nothing is more important than continuing to follow Jesus. And as Christians, we need to realize it's the same even today, right? Whether you're, you know, you're a nurse, you're a student, a lawyer, you know, whether you're a teacher, it doesn't matter. As long as you're a Christian and you're a follower of Christ, our number one priority is to follow Jesus. That's our number one priority. And then everything else follows along. And it's going to be hard. It's going to be rough. It's going to be tough. But that's why we have one another. Right? We're all brothers and sisters in Christ. So we need to encourage one another. We need to support each other. We need to pray for one another. And most importantly, God is with you. God is with us. And lastly, I just want to remind you guys, it's not about winning. Okay, winning in the sense of, you know, getting into an argument with this person who's a non-believer and trying to win the argument that, you know, Jesus is real, that Christianity is the best. No, 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 it's, it's, it's not about that. When we, what, we're, what we're about is being representatives of God's kingdom, representatives of Jesus Christ, being a witness and living as those people who have been saved and shown grace by God through Jesus Christ. So stay determined and remember that you are not alone. So let me pray for you guys and I'll see you guys next week. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much because you are with us always and thank you so much for giving us and continuing to encourage us, strengthen us through so many different ways. Lord Father, I just ask that and just pray for our cornerstone and our living stone that you would uh, continue to help us be determined and motivated to live out their lives as followers of Jesus. I just pray that they will always be reminded that they are your sons and daughters and they represent your kingdom. That our lives, that our priorities will be focused and centered around you and your word, which is the truth. Please help us. Please give us the courage and the determination to continue to fight the good fight. We pray these things in Jesus name. Amen. Our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come soon. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today the food we need and forgive us our sins as we have forgiven those who sin against us. And don't let us yield to temptation, but rescue us from the evil ones. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen.